Hello friends! Today we're going to talk about housing in Alaska. There are many misconceptions. Way out there on one side, people think we live in igloos, which we obviously do not. And then you might have had the misconception that everybody in Alaska lives in off-grid cabins. I'm going to take you around today and show you some of the different types of neighborhoods around Eagle River. And then we'll talk about typical houses in Alaska, um, at least in the Anchorage area. I have not lived outside of Anchorage and in the bush communities, they do things totally different than we do here. They heat their houses different. They have different things to get water. I'm just gonna share with you what it's like to live here in Eagle River. And if I know anything about those other places, I will make sure to add that information. Make sure you stick around to the end because I have been keeping track of all of our expenses for the house. So I can tell you how much we pay per month for our house here in Eagle River, what we pay for heating, what we pay for electric, what we pay for water, things like that. I will share all the details at the end of the video. So make sure you stick around. Before we get any further into this video, let me explain where Eagle River, Alaska is. Just in case you're new here, Eagle River is just north of Anchorage, Alaska, which is the biggest city in Alaska. So when I talk about Eagle River and I talk about Anchorage, I sometimes use them interchangeably. If you see here on the map, this is Eagle River Valley, and we are just directly north of Anchorage. And sometimes I refer to both of them as the same thing. I will use them back and forth because we are part of the municipality of Anchorage. Also just gonna zoom out so you can see where Anchorage is in the state of Alaska in case you didn't realize. We are here, what is called South Central Alaska. Alaska is a huge state, so I didn't want you to be confused about where we were talking about today. So let's get back to talking about housing in Eagle River or Anchorage, Alaska. First of all, we heat our home by baseboard heat. There are copper pipes in here that have hot water running through them and they are heated. This is warm right now, it is heating our house. A question I would love for you to answer down in the comments below is what temperature you keep your house at during the winter? We keep our house about 66 to 68 degrees during the winter. Um, that's why I'm often in a blanket. I often have on a sweatshirt layers because it's expensive to heat a big house. Our house does not have air conditioning. We only have heat. So that is something that is different from many of you in the South where I know you could not imagine living without air conditioning. We don't need it. Between having a couple ceiling fans and opening the windows, we just don't need the air conditioning, but we definitely need the heat. In addition to baseboard heaters, some people also have forced air. So you have the ducting and it blows out the warm air in their houses. I've lived in both type of houses in Alaska. I actually prefer the baseboard heaters because you don't have that hot air blowing and drying out your skin. One thing about having these baseboard heaters is you wanna try not to put too much furniture up against them. They need to have access to let out the heat. So if at all possible, you try not to cover them with furniture. Sometimes that's impossible depending on where they're put in the rooms, but you just do your best. We recently had some Airbnb guests from Florida and they kept calling us because they said that they couldn't get the thermostat to get up to 80 degrees. And we almost had a heart attack because Alaskans just don't keep their houses that warm. It's just too expensive. And we just have learned to layer up. We allowed them to put it at the temperature that they wanted, but I don't even think our thermostat goes to 80. We do have this gas fireplace here and it has a fan in it that pumps out a lot of heat. This is actually a really good heat source for us. It will heat up this whole upstairs. When we did our home remodel, we added this fireplace. Our house did not originally have a fireplace and we went back and forth forever, whether or not we wanted to have a wood burning. And we eventually decided to just do this so that we didn't have to haul wood all the way upstairs in our house. Um, many houses have good wood burning fireplaces, but honestly, if you do not have, if you just have a traditional fireplace, they're not good at pumping heat into the house. You have to have like a full wood burning stove. The regular traditional fireplaces, all the heat pretty much just escapes. So this was a good compromise and it does a good job of heating this room and adds awesome ambiance in the winter. For us, when it comes to appliances, ours are run off of gas. We have a gas dryer, we have a gas stove. Um, that is how we run our house. And that is also how our boiler is run is off of gas. So a lot of our utility money each month goes to natural gas, especially in the winter time. 
And then of course we have electric and we are part of electric co-op and pay to have electricity run to the house, obviously. Hello, Miss Luna. Have a nice nap. I didn't make my bed because every time I came in here, Luna was sleeping in it and I just haven't wanted to disturb her yet. <laughs> So when it comes to water in our house, we are actually on a well. So we have a well out in the yard that pumps water. We are also on a septic system. When it comes to Eagle River where we live, it really ranges whether or not you are on septic and well water or you are on city water and city sewer. A lot of the houses right in town are on city water and city sewer. As you get further out from town, you tend to be on well water and on a septic system because we are on a well and septic we do not pay for water we just have to pay for the electricity to pump the water out from the well but every year or year and a half you have to come there are lots of companies that will come around with a big truck and pump out your septic so that it can stay in good working order you might find it interesting that those people that are on water for the city actually just pay a flat rate. You do not get charged by how much water you use. I know in many places like in Arizona, they charge you by how much water you're using. There are many places in Alaska, like out in the bush. When I visited Mark and Bethel, when we were first married, they have to get their water trucked in. So a big water truck goes around and fills tanks at everybody's houses. And that is how they get water. It just depends on where you live. But here in Eagle River and Anchorage, you either have well water or you are on the city water those are the two options unless you're in like a dry cabin then you'd have to bring your own water in somehow we are very fortunate with our well water it tastes really really good but our neighbors two houses away their water tasted disgusting so we have really lucked out and have good well water but that's not the case for everybody on wells some people have to get water purification systems or they just buy all their water but we have excellent water and i'm very very grateful for that Right here in our house, we have an entrance into the attic of our house. When I grew up in Texas, we stored a lot of things in our attic. Here in our home, we do not store anything in our attic. We have trusses up there, and it's really important that you have the right amount of insulation in the ceiling to keep your house properly insulated, not getting hot spots on the roof where it melts really quickly and causes icicles and things like that. So we do not store anything in our attic and we do not ever get up in there because you don't want to get in there and ruin the insulation. It needs to stay nice and fluffy to keep your house properly insulated. If you have any other questions about houses in Alaska, make sure you leave them down in the comments. I can always do a part two. I'm just trying to think of all the things that I can share about our houses in Alaska that you may not have thought of. There are a few different options when it comes to how they build houses in Alaska. We're about to go drive around and look at some of the neighborhoods. You will notice that there is not a lot of brick. There is not a lot of stone. Houses in Alaska are built out of wood because we have major earthquakes here and wood is much more flexible than brick and stone. When I grew up in Texas, all the beautiful brick homes, we lived in a brick home, but here in Alaska, that is not a thing. And I remember being very shocked to not see a bunch of brick homes when we moved here and that is the reason they want to be more resistant to earthquakes. In the 1970s, it was very popular to build split level homes where you walked in and you either go down or up. The problem with split level homes is you come in and when you live in Alaska, you usually have jackets and boots and things like that. We lived in a split level home when we first got married and it was very tricky to have a place for all those hats and boots. So when we did our home remodel, we made sure to add this mudroom space here. We did not have a mudroom before. We used to put all our coats and jackets and boots and all that stuff in the garage. We used our garage as a mudroom, but we built all these lockers to store all of the gear that we need year round. And I also, it is a mess. I did not clean it up for you, I'm sorry. Real life here, but we also put a bench here and hooks here. When we have company, I make sure this is completely clear so people can take off their shoes and hang up their jackets. It works really well for Alaska. Smart builders would put in mud rooms. There's usually some sort of little nook, but in my opinion, a mud room almost needs its own entire room because of all the gear we need here in Alaska. 
I was just talking about those split level homes. You usually go up and down and then they're built on a concrete slab with the windows above ground. That is a very traditional 1970s Alaska house. I'm sure we will see some as we drive around today. Um, I prefer the kind of house that we have. They tend to build now is just on a slab for your garage. So a slab of concrete in the garage and the rest of the house is built on trusses, which gives you a crawl space below it that you can use as storage. Some houses have been built on marshy land and tend to have a lot of water under them. So make sure you ask about that in your crawl space. If you're moving here and looking to buy a house, um, my house in Anchorage that my parents owned, they had to constantly pump water out of their crawl space in the spring using a sump pump. Cause when things started to thaw there, basement would get full of water. We have never had water in our crawl space, thankfully, but it is something that we keep an eye out for all the time because you would want to get that pumped out. That is one thing people have asked us with the extra snow we've gotten this year. Do we worry about flooding? It's definitely a possibility. We hope that it will just melt really slowly over time and have time to soak into the ground, but you never know until spring happens, whether we have a fast spring or a slow spring, if it's going to how it's gonna turn out. I say basement, I mean crawl space. I probably said it wrong a million times in that. Now that is an option for some Alaska houses if they're built into some sort of hill. They'll, you'll walk in on the main level and then if the house goes down off a hill, they will often have a basement where you can just walk out. So a full walkout basement, we don't have that. So we just have a downstairs and an upstairs. And then we have a crawl space. We actually have two crawl spaces because when they put this extra where I'm standing is part of the new construction. Um, they added a new crawl space under this, but then the main house also has a crawl space underneath. And you might wonder why we have crawl spaces. That is where all the plumbing and electrical goes. Otherwise you would have big ducts and need to run it through there. So they run some of, they run it through the walls, but they also use underneath the house to run all of that stuff. I'll take, I'll, I'll take you for a quick look. So here is our crawl space. We store some kids toys down here. We store some Christmas down here. We also store our potatoes down here because it's quite chilly in the winter. So this is our crawl space. We're pretty lucky. If I stand between the joists, I can actually stand up in our crawl space. Oftentimes it's only like one to two feet. So that's why they call it a crawl space. We're pretty lucky because ours is big enough that I can stand in it between the joists. I often hit my head on these. Somebody told me to wear a helmet when I come down here and I think that is a very wise piece of advice. But as you see, there's pipes coming through here, electrical running through here, heating elements running through here. So that is what it is. Ow. See, I just hit my head. <laughs> okay, let's crawl out of here. One upgrade that some people will make to their houses or new houses will have in them is in-floor heating. They will run these coils underneath their flooring. We did not put that in any of the rooms in our house, but I have seen it at like Airbnbs or in bathrooms at certain people's houses. Super nice upgrade, not something that we did, but it is something that you will find in some Alaskan homes as just like that extra little touch to keep it nice and warm. This is our boiler. This is what keeps our house warm and nice and toasty and running. We have this water heater, heats up the water. This room puts off a ton of waste heat. It used to be in our garage and our garage was the warmest room in our house. This used to be part of the garage. When we did our home remodel, it got its own room. We always keep the door open because if you shut the door, it gets to over a hundred degrees in here. We know because we've done some science experiments in here where it needed to get nice and hot. But otherwise, this door stays open and helps heat the hole downstairs. And like I mentioned earlier, that boiler runs off of natural gas. So our house is heated by natural gas. In other cities in Alaska, like Fairbanks and North Pole, they have heating oil delivered. We do not have that here in Anchorage or Eagle River. That is not an option. Somebody knocked this off its thing. Okay. Ah! Not a one-handed job. One question I do get asked often is if our house has a backup generator between windstorms and ice storms and earthquakes. It would be smart for every Alaskan to have a backup generator. Unfortunately, that's not the case for everybody. Our house, we do have a backup generator. It is just a portable generator. We wheel it out and plug it in to the main electric box outside and have to flip a switch. 
It does not actually run the, our entire house when it is on, but it does run important parts of our house. So freezers, refrigerators. So yes, we have a generator. Not everybody has a generator. After the big 2017 earthquake, a lot more people got generators because our power was out for a long time and it was extremely helpful. So it is a smart thing to have. They are not cheap and they are kind of big and clunky to store and move around, but it has helped us on many occasions, especially when we have renters in the Airbnb, we feel like we need to make sure we have a backup source of energy so that they aren't cold and in the dark as well. All right, let's go take a quick drive around Eagle River so I can show you some of the different types of neighborhoods that we have around town. Then we will come back and look at our computer to see what some of these properties might cost here in Eagle River. And then I will tell you the specifics of what we pay for our house and utilities. On our way to the car, I need to take this bag of garbage. So let's discuss garbage in Alaska at least here in the city of Anchorage. It is garbage pickup day, so I'm actually gonna head out to the road and get our garbage can. We do have garbage pickup. Some people choose to still take their garbage and drop it off, but we do have garbage pickup. It comes weekly. Ours comes extremely early, like six o'clock in the morning. Okay. In the summertime, you cannot put your garbage can out early because bears will come around and knock them all over and eat out of them unless you have one of these bear resistant trash cans. It actually has a bear right there. It locks so it can't open up. And then a bear can't get into it because they will come and knock over trash cans and just eat all the trash and then you have a problem with a trash bear. So. If you want to put it out the night before or if you want to keep your garbage outside and not in your garage you got to get a bear can and it does cost more to have a bear can than just a regular trash can if you have a regular trash can you got to keep your trash inside locked up during the summertime when the bears are awake if not you can get a fine for leaving your stuff out and it getting attracting bears you got to follow the rules We do also have recycling. That's this bin right here. It comes every other week, not every week. The things that we're able to recycle here are cans, aluminum cans, plastic, and cardboard. No glass in our recycling right now. They just don't have anywhere to process it. Whew, let's get back inside and get in the car. Having a garage was something that was really important to us when we were house hunting. We started in an apartment, our cars were kept outside. If you needed to go anywhere, you had to make sure you got all the snow off of it, scraped the windows, started it early so that it would run properly. Even if it gets super cold in the negatives, even plugging your cars in, they have a little heater that you can get installed so that your engine will warm up faster. Then we moved into a house in Anchorage and it had a carport, so at least we didn't have to scrape the snow off of our cars. But when we were looking for more of our forever home, we wanted to make sure we at least had a two car garage. There are many Alaskans that even with garages have so much stuff in their garages that they don't park in them, which kind of boggles my mind because for us, it's a must to park in the garage. We are pretty lucky though. We have a shed and a carport that we can store stuff in. So I understand why people fill their garages full of stuff because Alaska requires a lot of equipment when you are an outdoor family, but we're lucky enough to be able to store it in other locations and park in the garage. Another thing that was on our list was we wanted to make sure that we had a driveway that was relatively flat. There are lots of driveways in Alaska that are sloped up and down, really tricky when it gets icy. That was not something we wanted to deal with. So we were grateful when we found this house with a very flat driveway and a garage. The first neighborhood that we're going to explore is called Powder Ridge. These houses have been built in the last 10, maybe as far back as like 15 years, but have not been around that long. This is a newer neighborhood. They have a very strict HOA or homeowners association. So they tell them what paint colors they can paint their houses, 
how they how many cars they can have parked in their driveway whether or not they can have trailers um, they have a lot of rules that they have to follow but it keeps the neighborhood looking really nice and tidy and has like a similar theme very nice neighborhood this is called Powder Ridge so this is one type of neighborhood you will find in Anchorage and Eagle River more of these planned communities they have smaller yards um, but everything looks really nice and tidy and up they make sure that you upkeep your properties. It's every kid's dream to have a big snow pile at the end of their road, right? Next up, we are in more of the heart of Eagle River. This section is a bit older than Powder Ridge. This is more probably 1970s to 1980s houses. There are a lot of duplexes. Uh, less garages around here, but this is just another type of neighborhood that we have here in Eagle River. These type of neighborhoods do not tend to have HOAs or homeowners associations, so you will see more eclectic groups of houses. Not a bad thing, it's just the reality of the different types of neighborhoods that these are. The yards here are not particularly large, but they do have bigger lots than um, in like that Powder Ridge neighborhood, it seems like few more mature trees um, definitely an older neighborhood okay next we have a little housing development um, these are all I think they're all at least duplexes which means two houses connected together um, it's called Dove Tree townhomes so they're townhomes um, the thing about this neighborhood is it's built on a hill and every property other than the color look very similar to each other so that's kind of like that last neighborhood we were in um, all the houses looked a little bit unique this neighborhood they all look very similar very little um, yard to maintain this neighborhood amazes me because it is built on the hill so you are going up 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 as you're going up these houses some bald eagles flying through town here. There's two eagles following each other. Just returned a library book. So we are in town now. We have looked at an older neighborhood, a newer neighborhood, townhouses. Now here in the heart of Eagle River, we have some apartments and more apartment-like housing. So let's look at those. This is our main town park. It's called Town Square. We also have bowling and bingo over here. And we have some brand new, built within the last two years, apartments called Regency Place. They look really nice. If you go to the right, you have more traditional houses with a garage. The split level 1970s houses. If you go to the left, there is a lot of townhouses or duplexes as we like to call them. These were probably built in the 90s, 2000s. I could be really wrong on those dates, but these look like the houses that I grew up in and they were built in around the 90s and early 2000s. Now we're heading to the right and these are more just single family houses with one to two car garages. I'm gonna have to refilm this video in the summertime because the houses are hidden behind such gigantic snow berms right now, it's kind of comical. So this is your very traditional split level house. You walk in, you go up and down. Those bottom um, windows are just above ground. Probably half this neighborhood is a split level house. And that is very 80s, 70s style. in this tree right above me. 
crazy. That's an eagle. If you look up the mountain here, there are, oh, this eagle's giving us a show. If you look up the mountain here, there are lots of houses up the mountain. Lots of new fancy mansions being built up there. We're not gonna go all the way up there right now because I'm not in a four wheel drive vehicle, but that is another type of house that you will find here in Eagle River bigger houses built on the side of the mountain that have amazing views of the inlet really cool to live up there we prefer to be down here in the valley where it's flat but that is an option here in eagle river next up we have more traditional apartment complexes so one and two bedroom apartments where there are a lot of apartments within one building So at apartment complexes like this, they have a bigger trash can for the whole unit instead of individual trash cans. A few of them have these carports. These ones have single car garages. But most of them just have open parking like this. I'm making a quick stop here at the Eagle River Post Office. That's another thing that I can share. In Eagle River, your mail can get delivered to your neighborhood. We have traditional mailboxes. Some neighborhoods have lock boxes, depending on if your neighborhood has paid for the lock boxes or just you have the traditional ones. So we do get our mail delivered. You can also have a PO box like we have to get outside mail. If we have a package, they give us a key and they put them in these bigger ones. Now I'm not showing you all the neighborhoods in Eagle River. I just kind of wanted to show you each type of neighborhood that you find here. Now we have one more area in Eagle River. Um, it actually has its own name. It's either called Birchwood, Chugiak, Peters Creek. These are areas a little bit further out from the middle of town where you get bigger properties, uh, bigger yards, and then the houses run an entire gamut. They can be really nice, they can be new, and there's a lot of old houses, there's a lot of just run down houses. Um, but when you, if you want more property, um, then you gotta get out of Eagle River. We are now in Birchwood. That is the name of the road we are driving on. It is called the Birchwood Loop. You will notice that there are a lot more trees, old trees back here than there are in the neighborhoods in town. Properties out here are much more spaced out. If you want, you know, an acre or two acres or three acres, this is Birchwood and Chugiak and Peters Creek is where you would probably buy a house. You're still close to town, but you can have a little bit more space. There are newer houses back in here mixed with old houses. Most of these houses would be on well water and septic. that view so the houses back here are usually tucked back in behind some trees they have a lot more space and land like I've been saying um, some of them are old some of them are new people have bought land that you know people used to have big parcels of land like 10 acres and then eventually they kind of divided them up so you'll see newer houses that's what happened with our house our neighbor had 10 acres and then he sold some land and was able to get some money for um, 
breaking it up into four lots. So each lot has two and a half acres. There's a cool log style house right there. This house here on the left has some horses and a little barn. See a lot more of that out here where they have more land. I had to pull out my sunglasses. It has been weeks since the sun has shone. It feels so weird. I was like, why do my eyes feel funny? And then I'm like, oh, that's sunshine. <laughs> Need to put my sunglasses on. It's just been so dark and dreary that we haven't needed them. Yay for sunshine. The clouds are trying to cover them up, but you get little pockets of sunshine. Before I share our specific numbers for our house here in Eagle River, let's take a look on the computer and see what it is costing for houses in our area. It's been like 10 years since we've bought a house and I am not paying attention to those kind of things. Let's take a look at Zillow. This first one we have is a four bedroom, two bath. 1,886 square feet, and it is on sale for 420,000. Now this is in a neighborhood, let's see if it tells us how old it is. So this was built in 1977. So the houses in this neighborhood are built in the 70s. It's very, very common type of house in Alaska. You walk upstairs, living room, kitchen, two bedrooms, and then two bedrooms down, small galley kitchen, Nice backyard, not too small. I'd say this is a very typical starter home in Alaska, which is kind of crazy for $420,000. This looks very similar to our first house, but ours did not have a garage. Um, so $420,000. Now let's go, let's see if I can zoom in and go to maybe more of a newer neighborhood. Let's see on this side over here. So this is a newer neighborhood built in 2023. So this is a brand new house. So 2,124 square foot, three bedroom, three bathroom. This is in a neighborhood that has um, smaller lots. So much smaller yards. So this one is $674,000. So much more expensive for a newer home, but definitely upgraded for some of the like the flooring and more open space. Um, I'm not sure what they were doing there on that uh, fireplace, adding that different one in the middle. It does have some nice mountain views, much more open layout. So newer home, 674,000. Whew, houses are expensive. No yard to speak of on that one. Um, now let's go maybe more up the mountain, like up Eagle River Valley. This is also a new construction, looks very basic, built in 2022, four bedroom, three bath. Um, but in a different location. This is a neighborhood, again, that has HOAs, small yards. You're very close to your neighbors. Cute house, very beautiful views out the window of the mountains, open layout, some upgrades, a lot of it just builder basic. So that is what $600,000 will get you. Here's another like older home, 425,000. This one looks like it does not have a garage. So this one's 425,000, three bedrooms, three baths, 2,880 square feet. It actually has a little bit more. It has a basement. This looks like the drop ceiling. Oh, and it has Looks like it has a second kitchen maybe. So maybe an income property on this one, which would be nice. Income properties do really well in Alaska. And this one has 0.25 acres. Let's see, here's a little bit, a very cheap one. Let's see what that is. Oh, it's just for land. So 119,000 just for the piece of land. Let's see what this $780,000 gets you. 
four bedroom, three bath, 2,172 square feet, new build. All right, so this is a new construction. Um, if that's really the view, that's great. Wow. Four beds, three bath, 779,000. A little bit higher end details instead of like insert bathtubs, they have tiling. If that's the view, wow, you got an amazing view. Okay. So that gets, that's a little bit more expensive. Let's see what an apartment costs in Eagle River. Okay, so we've got a couple options here. So this is a Look at the floor plan. So this is a one bedroom apartment in Eagle River. It's $1,300 to $1,685 for a two bedroom. Uh, apartment for rent. This is like a little 700 square foot, one bedroom, one bath attached to somebody's house. The tiny little fridge looks more like an Airbnb to me. $2,150 a month. Renting a two bedroom house, it says $2,280 a month. All right, let's see if we can. Maybe do people still use Craigslist? We found our house on Craigslist 10 years ago. So let's see, housing, apartments, housing. So here is a newly updated townhome, $2,000 a month plus heat and light, and you're responsible for the lawn. Two bedrooms, a washer dryer, and you get a garage, so, and a little bit of a lawn. Let's see, legacy apartment homes. Two bedroom, one bath, 800 square feet, $1,355. And this is more of a traditional like apartment complex. This looks a lot like the apartment Mark and I lived in when we first got married, but we only had one bedroom. Okay, so we're getting an idea. Two bedroom. One bathroom, one car space. This is an Anchorage. They allow pets. And that is 1,355. So that maybe gives us a good estimate of what they cost. Okay, let's expand our search a little bit to like that Chugiak area. Let's, yeah, Chugiak, where there were um, some bigger properties. Let's see what those kind of prices are. So here's a house in Chugiak. Three attached garage. So now they have 1.17 acres, a little bit bigger. Wow, look at those views. This is a four bedroom, three bathroom, 3,786,000 square feet. So a little bit bigger of a house. As you can see with that aerial photo, bigger yards, a lot more trees. Nice three-car garage. This is a really cute house. It's really nicely decorated as well. Nice deck. So 619,000, you get a little bit more space and land and a little bit bigger house as well. Now I'm buffering. Okay, let's look at and see what else we have. 
in like the Chugiak area. But here's the house on the Birchwood Loop. New construction, 749,000 for four bedrooms, three baths. This is fancy and new. Right. So that's what $749,000 will get you of new construction. I wonder if there's going to be houses around there. Let's see how big that property is. Oh, you get 3.59 acres. So bigger. They have forced air. You know, we have that baseboard. This one has forced air. Nice. There we go. Request a tour. No, thank you. One cool thing you can find in this area, I didn't mention, um, in Chugiak, there are a few housing developments that are built right on a small airplane runway. So if you have a small airplane, kind of like we have a small airplane, Mark parks it at the Birchwood Airport, which is a small airport. But they do have a few communities where you can fly right in and then the houses have hangers attached to them, which has always seemed really, really cool. I wonder if I could find one just to show you. It's in Chugiak. Let's see if we can find it. Okay, wow. $1.3 million. We have gone up. This is a mansion. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. This is a huge jump up. But look at this house. Let's see if we can... Nine bedrooms, 10 baths, huge yard, huge amount of gar Man, they have garages on like both sides. I wonder if it's like multifamily. Probably not. And then they have this private airstrip, which is pretty cool. You could just pull your plane right up to your house. Wow. This house is huge. Hmm. Very funky. Alaska houses can be funky. This is really nice. It has a lot of potential, but it's huge. You have to have a lot of furniture. I feel like this type of thing is definitely going out of style. Like this isn't a bedroom. It has a mini fridge and a sink. You really don't use those kind of things. Wow, this house is big. Is that a second kitchen? Yeah, that's a totally different kitchen. So it's got a rental property on it, which I guess makes up for the $1.3 million, whatever. I do like this, a washer and dryer in your bathroom. Yes. I mean, in your closet, not your bathroom. Garages everywhere. See, there's the airplane hanger right in your house. It's like a totally other level. But this is an option for some places in Alaska. Oh, like a safe room. There's another hanger. All right. Well, there you go. That is a house on a airstrip, which is pretty cool. But out of our price range. When it comes to taxes and living in Alaska, there's kind of a wide range of information. I have it opened here from like the Department of Commerce Community Economic Development website, just so that I get it right. But Alaska is the largest of the United States. If you didn't know that, we're like two times the size of Texas. However, a, only a small portion of it is even made into cities or can have property taxes. So this will vary depending on where you are in Alaska. 107 municipalities have a sales tax and it ranges anywhere from 1% up to 7%. Here in Eagle River or Anchorage, we do not have a sales tax, but if you go north of us to Palmer and Wasilla, they do have a sales tax. And then several cities to the south of us also have sales tax. We also do not have any state personal income tax, which is pretty shocking to some people, but we do have property tax. So let's look at information about property taxes here in Anchorage. 
I am looking at a website called Smart Asset. You can look up your city, you can look up your state and find out how much the property taxes are in that area. Many cities in Alaska do not have any property tax. However, the largest city, including Anchorage, does. Anchorage property taxes in the state are a bit higher than the national average of property taxes. The average effective property tax rate in Anchorage is 1.17% while in the US the rate is 0.99%. So in this website, I can enter in the zip code and let's put the house value at $500,000. If you have a $500,000 home at 1.4%, I don't know why it went up there, you would probably pay an estimated $7,000 in taxes a year. It says the average for Alaska, you would pay $5,800 and the national average, if it had the national average, you would be paying just under $5,000 in property taxes. So yes, we do not have a lot of other taxes, but we do have high property taxes in Anchorage. I am not great at knowing all this tax stuff off the top of my head. That would be more of my husband's accounting background. He could probably explain it much better, but I hope you understand that we do not have sales tax here in Eagle River. We do not have state tax or income tax, but we do have quite high property taxes. I just had a realization. The sun is shining in our window. This doesn't happen for about two and a half months in the winter time. This is the first time I've seen it shining in the window in months. You celebrate this. This is something you also have to realize when buying a house in Alaska. Some houses are in shadows for multiple months at a time. So if you're near a mountain, or in our case, we have a hill in our yard, you have to realize that there's gonna be certain times in the year where you do not get direct sunlight into your house. It's just part of life, living around mountains and lack of daylight. So we're doing a little celebration when the sun finally comes back into the house. This is the first day that I've seen it because the sun hasn't been out for a while. Hello, sunshine. <laughs> you think I was talking to you? You are, miss. Hi, other sunshine. You're my kitty sunshine. <laughs> I might actually have to put my blinds down here in my office or I'm just gonna sit and just like soak it in. I think I'm just gonna suffer through it because uh, you gotta take the sunshine you can get in the winter in Alaska. Okay, it is finally time to go through this stack of papers and talk about what we pay to live here in Alaska. Now, let's start with my cell phone. I know that's not really house related, but you might be interested. I use GCI, which is a local company. I've been happy with them. I have like unlimited talk and text at this point um, and unlimited data. I just upgraded because working from my phone, I kept going over on my data. So I pay $66 a month for my cell phone. I just bought my phone outright. So that is just what I pay for having the phone connected. $66, whatever that means compared to where you live, I don't know. Now we will get into our utilities and how much we pay, and I'm gonna keep track so that we can add it all up at the end. So first of all, we have NSTAR, which is our natural gas company. And this one is quite interesting. I tried to get rid of any information that I don't wanna be sharing on the internet, you know. But if you can see this little chart right here, it shows how much gas we use. Those are the blue lines. And then the little dotted line is the temperature. So as the temperature gets warmer in the summertime, we go down to just using a bare minimum of natural gas in the summertime, but that shoots way up in the winter time. Like January, wow, through the roof. Okay, so because the numbers fluctuate so much throughout the year, we are on what is called budget billing. So they just bill us the same amount every month. And then at the end of the year, if there's extra, they take it off the next payment. If there's not enough, then we have to pay that. I hope that makes sense, but it makes it easy for us to talk about how much it cost us. So um, the when this bill came, which was in um, October to November, we spent $214, but our budget is $194. So we went above the budget, but we always pay $194 a month. 
And in the cold months, we definitely use more than that. But in the warmer months, which is uh, June, July, August, September, our bill goes way down. I should find a bill and see what it is actually in the summertime because I think it's probably like really, really inexpensive. All right, next up we have MTA, which is the Matanuska Telecom Association. This is our internet. When we bought this house, um, GCI also does internet and I think it's faster internet, but it doesn't come to our house. I don't know if the cables don't come here. We're trying to look into seeing if that's an option, but when we moved in, the only option was to have MTA. Their prices, are really high for internet in my opinion, but maybe you tell me how it compares to yours. It's really slow too. My YouTube videos take hours to upload and we have one of the better plans. Anyways, $140 a month for internet. Okay, next is Matanuska Electric Association. Again, we are on budget billing because it goes up and down, but this one is not nearly the same amount. So here's our kilowatt usage for the year. It stays much more even than the gas does. So for this bill in November, the current, we spent $185 um, and our budget amount is 201. So we were a little bit below the budgeted amount. So. $201 for electric. Next we have Alaska Waste. And this gets paid, it's not monthly. So we're gonna have to do this. So it says one bear cart, or the bear trash can is $67.29. And the recycling can is $51.53. So this is billed four times a year. So we need to take 126. Divided by three months. So it is $42 a month for our waste. Now it is higher. That 67.29 used to be lower when we didn't have that bear trash can. It does cost more to have the bear trash can, but it's better for our peace of mind. So we pay $126.03 every three months, making it $42 a month. Now, if I lived in Anchorage or in part of Eagle River that had water and sewer, we would have a water and sewer payment. Maybe I can figure out what that is. Anchorage Water and Wastewater Utility, AWWU. Hi, Luna. Who came to visit us? Hi. Can you say hi to your friends? Okay, let's see. Single family rate. Water rate is $9.91 for a single family home and $10.30 for wastewater. So somewhere around $20 a month is what it's saying. It's been years since we paid for water. When we lived in Anchorage, we were on water, so we paid for that. All right, last but not least, we have our house. Um, if I'm being honest, I don't know how many square feet our house is. Um, we do have this apartment attached to it. Um, our house had two bedrooms when we moved into it and a small kitchen. And when we had four kids, we decided we needed to remodel. So this part that I'm sitting in here right now, we put a new garage on the front, pushed this part of the house out, um, kept the original kitchen, but just rearranged the island on the kitchen um, and added this fireplace entryway and we're able to now fit four bedrooms in the house. Plus we have the apartment, which is a one bedroom apartment. Anyways, each year the city sends us a tax assessment of our property. This is our tax assessment for 2023. So you know how much you're going to pay in property taxes. It says the land that we have, which is a two and a half acres is assessed at 121,000 and our building is assessed at 530,700. Um, I don't know if what our house is really worth because like I said, we did this remodel, we bought it. I can't remember what we even bought it for. $651,700 is what the city says our house is worth. So we're gonna go off of that number and then I'll just tell you how much we pay a month. This includes, it does have our taxes built into that for the city, um, in some interest and all that stuff. Let's see, what is our payment? 
our payment, our house payment, if we just paid exactly what was due every single month is $2,753. So that is our house payment every month, $2,753. So let's add those things up and I'll tell you what it costs to live in our house per month. So we have 194 a month for gas, plus 140 a month for internet. Man, that is high. We need to see if we can get that adjusted. 201 for electric, 42 for the waste. We do not pay for water, 2,753 a month for our house. So our grand total is $3,330 a month for our house here in Eagle River, Alaska. All right, that's a lot of money. When you break it down like that, it's good to, it's good to look at those numbers and kind of know where you're at. Would I say that housing in Alaska is expensive? Yes, but it all depends on where you are. I know compared to California, we are not as expensive, but when we moved from Texas, my parents couldn't even sell their beautiful, huge brick house with a beautiful yard. They had it on the market for like $199,000, which when you come up to Alaska and then little houses are $400,000, then yes, it's mind blowing. So it's all about perspective. Um, we are very grateful for our house. We found this house on Craigslist. Um, I wanted to have a house that had a mother-in-law apartment for my parents to live in when they got to an age where they didn't want to own a home anymore. That was kind of always the plan. We lived in Anchorage at the time. I found this house on Craigslist and the ad was so messed up. Something had happened when they had copy and pasted it into Craigslist. It was a for sale by owner and oh my goodness, I thought we're either gonna come here and find a gem of a house or we are going to go and get murdered because who knows who wrote this ad. Well, we came and the owners were super kind and nice. They had just thrown it up on Craigslist for like three days and then they were gonna be out of town for like two weeks so they were gonna take it back down. So they just did it really quick. We happened to see it. We came and looked at it. We fell in love with it. We had faith that moving forward, we could make it into what we wanted. We loved the property. We loved the mother-in-law apartment. We love that it had a flat driveway and a yard for the kids to play in. It had a shed. It has a carport that we could have chickens in. We've had chickens in the past. We do not have them right now. Um, but it just had a lot of things that we wanted. And I had a vision for turning it into our dream home at some point. And about five, six years after we moved in, we were able to make that happen. So um, we are very grateful to have this house. And at that time, because it was only a two bedroom home, it fit within our budget. We did not pay $600,000 for this house. That took years for us to like, you know, m build it up to what we wanted it to be. And we had to get a different loan for that. And now it's all together in one loan. So I'd be interested to see if we were to sell this house, how much we could get for it because it could be worth more than what the city thinks it's worth, but I don't really care because I, we have no plans of leaving this house. We love it so much um, and we have no plans of going anywhere. So thank you so much for spending time with me today and talking about Alaska houses. I hope you learned something. I hope you found it interesting. I would love to do more informational type videos like this. So give me your questions down in the comments. What do you want to know about? I'm thinking maybe talk about schools in Alaska. I don't know. You guys always have good ideas. So let me know what you want to learn about. We love you. We're grateful for each and every one of you that spends time with us. And we'll see you again real soon for more of This Alaska Life. You say goodbye. Bye-bye.